Hello and welcome to the podcast. Um, my name is Marie and this is my yarn journey. Just a warning, the dog has gotten up on my knee before and just got down just as I press record so I'm not sure if we will have any doggy interruptions this time. Um, first thing I wanted to do was just say um, a massive thank you. I'm blown away by um, how many people have um, viewed my last podcast so if you have done that big thank you it's nice to know i've got people out there watching and supporting supporting the channel um today is good friday that i'm recording this and i'll be releasing it on sunday so if you're watching it, it'll be easter sunday or after them um so i just wanted to say happy easter um, hope you have some lovely Easter plans or you've done some lovely Easter things and if you are working I hope that it's a pleasant experience. We go the dog's got nice and settled now so hopefully we can continue and I'll cut out all the messing about I've just had with him wanting to go out and vice versa. Um, it looks cozy now doesn't it? Uh, the day, today is a traditional podcast episode um, I've not got any finished objects, but I have got um, four whips that I want to talk to you about, show you my progress, and then I'm also wanting to talk about my uh, bingo card, which I've not looked at for a few weeks, and I'm hoping by talking about it on here, it's going to keep me accountable uh, to make sure that I get get things ticked off on there. So uh, the first thing that I want to talk about which was my main um, whip in the first week after the last podcast and that is my Paul sweater by Morka Knit. Um, you've seen that a few times now it is um, an ongoing, ongoing project of mine. I'm knitting that in the Woolly Knit merino wool four ply and I've just got uh, my Ravelry, Ravelry information up on the screen here so that I can read it to you because I often forget to say stuff. Um, it's in the colourway plater which I absolutely love, it's like a lilac, cool tone lilac colour. I'm knitting it on four millimetre needles and I'm holding the Woolly Knits cone double so I've got two cones. Um, it's not a very portable project so I can only knit that at home because I have the two cones under my desk here um, and then but last week uh, um, like I say I mainly knit on that and if you remember from the last, last podcast I was um, just starting the first sleeve uh, and I'm now on the endless rib of the cuff uh, I'll just show you that now um, just got all my uh, projects piled down here next to the chair so if you see me bending over a bit it's just because I'm getting them out to show you. Okay now if anyone spotted on the last last podcast there was an error in what I said and I'm going to show you and see if anyone realises. Now look at the shape of this sleeve. I'm definitely not increasing on these sleeves. Um, it was pointed out to me that last time I was saying I was going to be using these light bulb stitch marks because I think I had done two of the decreases. Um, let me just see if I've shown you properly. So I'm using this nifty trick which um, I saw uh, Amanda from Birch and Lily doing this and it reminded me to use these and it, and it is a really good way of tracking uh, your decreases on your sleeves because uh, I, I easily lose count. So uh, I've done all the decreases there which you can see with the light bulb stitch markers. I think I was about here last time uh, I recorded the podcast which was two weeks ago. Uh, how many times can I say two weeks? And um, so yeah, each time I do one, I put a light bulb stitch marker in and then just a bit of straight knitting to do and then that's where I've hit the cuff. Now I've put a marker there so that I can easily, now when I do the next sleeve, is just transfer these across and I'll know that my second sleeve matches. 
and um, I did actually hear in one of the podcasts someone mention, and I can't remember who it was, about doing sleeves two at a time. Now I've done socks two at a time and I'm thinking because I'm the same with sleeves because I've just got to the point with this where I'm getting a bit like come on and I want to finish it so close. Um, but the thought of knitting uh, two sleeves at the same time, I'm not sure if that'll be more hassle than it's worth, especially given the size of this garment. I don't know. don't know how hard it would be logistically to do or if it'll be confusing or not. So if you've knit two sleeves at a time, will you let me know? Because I'd, I'd love to hear someone's experiences. So I'm currently doing the ribbing on the cuff of my first sleeve and um, I've got to knit to 13 centimetres. I think I've got about two centimetres left to do. Now I was struggling to knit this and ended up putting it to the side and it literally was that I needed to put a smaller wire on my uh, interchangeable needles and I was like and it because it was on the too big I was really having to shove the stitches along and it started hurting my hands quite a bit so I finally changed it and it is a lot easier to knit now so hopefully this week I'll be able to get the um, the last two centimetres done and start on the next sleeve <coughs> I'm wondering whether to do the collar next or the next sleeve. Now if I do the next sleeve I know obviously it's all fresh in my mind and I'll remember exactly what I need to do. Whereas and to be honest the collar on this one is daunting me a little bit because it's it just because this garment is so oversized the ne the neckline just looks huge and I'm like oh I've got to pick up all them stitches. I know that once I get started it'll be absolutely fine and it's probably just all in my head but you know what it's like with these things but I'm so close to the finish line now and I really want this garment finished and knowing my look it's just going to be finished as the sun comes out and it gets too too warm because um, you know it is trying at the moment although we're supposed to be having a storm this afternoon who knows if the weatherman is correct with that I don't think there's anything else that I need to tell you about that one uh, I'm sure this is going to be a staple in my wardrobe once it's done, but yeah, it might just end up that I can't wear it much until till next winter. Okay, what should we talk about next? I think we'll do this one. Okay, so the other thing I've been knitting on is my um, sock tube. I can't remember if I've set up a it's getting really long now. I've set up a project page for this. But if you haven't seen my last podcast, uh, where I do briefly mention this, because I am doing a standalone video about this sock tube, because it's a new technique that I uh, saw on Craft House Magic, where she knit a full ball of... 100 gram ball of yarn into a sock tube by doing the cuff at one end and then the cuff at the other end and she actually makes two pairs of socks out of it. So I really wanted to have a go at this and I am um, recording a standalone video like I say of, of my progress of this and I'm going to uh, bring you along to watch me when I cut into it and put the heels in and the toes in and how it all works out and what the fit ends up like because I'm really interested to see uh, what it's like. Uh, when I last measured this I had uh, 38 grams left of this yarn. This is one that I got in my um, latest uh, wool swap from my lovely uh, German wool swap lady. I'll just get grab my scales from down here and I'll weigh what I've got left on here. Oh sorry Vinnie. Squashing the dog. Okay I'll just put my scales on the table here. And then we'll see what I've got left to knit. I did actually, unfortunately this week, have an A&E visit with my youngest because he'd fallen off his bike and he'd um, hit his leg and we were a bit concerned as to whether he'd fractured it or broken it. So we ended up in A&E, so I've got quite a bit of knitting done on this. It's fantastic this for 
out and about because I'm doing it on a circular it's so easy just to chuck in your bag take with you knit on even sometimes like I'm just sat here and I'm just having a brew or you know whatever it's five minutes sit down you can easily just pick this up and knit it and you don't need to think at all it's totally mindless so I really love that about it I didn't quite I don't know why, but it didn't quite compute in my mind how big this sock tube was actually going to be if I was knitting a full 100 grams. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, trying the technique and seeing how it is. I know a few people have said that they're not keen on the fit of an afterthought heel, but I've never tried that before. So again, it'll be another heel to try. I'm still working towards finding my perfect fit sock. Uh, the 64 stitch seems to work well for me, although um, it's a little bit tight on the instep. But I've noticed that it's like that when I first blocked and finished the socks. But after a while, they do relax slightly and then they are the perfect fit. Whereas my partner, the, the perfect fit for him is 60. Uh, literally, the first pair of socks I've knit for him seem to be the perfect fit. Um, but I don't think his instep is as, is as high as mine. Um, anyway, let's weigh this ball of yarn and then we can see what I've got left and how much I've managed to knit. Like I say, I had 38 grams left last time I weighed this. Ooh, 31. I can't remember, it's, well it's almost 32 actually, so I've got 32 grams left on this ball. This is how long, I can just fold it over and then you can see better, that's how long it is at the moment. So, um, me and my son were laughing when we were there because it's like, he it's, 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 it's said, oh, it look, mum it looks like a, a pair of tights. So, it is very, very long. But like I say, I'm going to keep knitting it until I've run out of this. Maybe I'll have it done by next fortnight, who knows. But I am just, it's not like my main project. I'm just picking it up here and there. And then when I do come to the point where I'm going to separate it into the socks and knit those bits, I will then um, record that. And then you can can see how it all goes. It could be a disaster, who knows. But we'll, it's good to try new things. Um, what else? Sorry, we've got an interruption. <laughs> Just me oldest son there going in to get his dinner. The next thing that I want to talk about um, today is, and I don't think you've seen this in any of the podcasts yet because I hadn't worked on it for a while. This is my Pearl Soho The Incredible Blanket. Um, it's an absolutely lovely pattern, very easy. It's a uh, four row repeat and you do two rows of one colour and then two rows of your next colour. It's a free pattern. It's quite easy, just for some reason I've struggled to memorise it. And I've made several mistakes in this, um, but this to me is my real scrappy projects, a project that I'm, I'm just doing for me. It's just a blanket. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I am looking forward to having the finished object. I started this in December last year and the first part was my um, scrappy advent. Uh, I did an advent swap. It was the advent swap that was uh, organised by um, Rebecca from the Crayer Bay. And I absolutely had so much joy and pleasure from every day opening those little parcels that she'd sent me with the with the scrappy yarn in and putting them into this blanket. And it, it really, I enjoyed that much, much more for some reason than the advents I'd actually bought. Um, and just the, the, the colours she gave me were wonderful and it was just so exciting. And literally I just opened them every day and straight away they went into this blanket. Now I've not followed the blanket exactly and I, uh, just let me see if I can see on my Ravelry because um, my friend uh, Mona, she also cast on this same blanket at the same time 
um, and I'll just check if I've put it in the notes. I've not. Um, anyway, I think that the original blanket, the um, stripes take up more. Now, I, they did a kit. I can't remember the full details, but um, I just remember that uh, when Mona cast hers on, she was saying to me that it would take over 10 grams to do the two stripes if we cast on the number of stitches that is um, quoted in the pattern. I'm not sure if it says on the actual information just here. So let me see if I can get the pattern up because I bet I've got it on my... Um, yeah, it'll be on here. One second. I'll just look at the first part because it's a free pattern so I don't think there's any problem with me showing it. Yeah, and it's a lot lot bigger than what we've done. That's the picture if you can see it. Well, I'll put it up on the side of the screen anyway. Um, really, really lovely. It's done in linen quill, the original project. I'm just using it as a scrappy project, anything that goes. And I'm just holding uh, a fingering weight double to do mine. And let's just read what it, I'm trying to find the bit where it says how many stitches to cast on. I've knitted, I've knitted over all my ends. I'm not really bothered if they show or not because it's, like I say, it's just for me. I just want to make it super easy and enjoyable. Ah, so it says to cast on 332 stitches in the pattern. Now I think that I cast on 250 when I did this. And like I say, it is quite a simple um, pattern where you're purling one and then you're knitting in the row below. Um, and then the next row you're knitting, it's like I say, and it would be easy memorizable, but for some reason I just haven't been able to memorize it. But when you've got a lot of other things on the go, and this isn't your main project, I suppose it's not gonna gonna go in as easily. Um, and I'll try and hold it up again. Oh, I have put a um, stitch marker in as well to show because I started working on this again about a week ago. And I've added in some colours and I wonder if I can remember what they are. Okay, I'll just hold it up so you can see. Bear in mind, like I said, I have made a few small errors. I've gone out of line of the pattern. The four row repeat, sometimes I've done row one, two and then one, two again. But I still love the way this is turning out. And it, to me, it's just a scrappy project for me. And I, and I love it. It brings me so much joy. So... Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so a few of the colours that I can remember. The blue one here, which is like a blue, and then it's got like um, all different colours mixed in with the blue purples and some oranges. That one and the neon that you can see, the neon yellow, they were both from a Christmas gift from Mona, which was a Christmas bauble that had two minis in. Then... Um, this one, the like turquoise, not turquoise, what is it? Like a sea foam sort of colour. That one came <coughs> as a free gift with my um, especially for you order from Craft Half Magic. So I've put that in my blanket. The top one here, I'm just starting to work now on some of the colours that I've used in my... Uh, uh, Tolster tea, which you will have seen me wearing if you've watched um, one of my other episodes. And um, everything that I've got left from the Tolster tea is going to go into this now. So I've got that in um, a bag and I'm just starting to add them now, which is really nice. Oh, and this uh, peachy colour here, that is um, the leftovers from the socks I made with the landscape minis from Blue, Blue Fern Yarn in January. So I'm quite surprised though that I can remember so many of these. Like I say, 
So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine, nine, ten, you know, nine rows since I um, got it out again and started adding stuff onto it. The rows do take quite a long time because I'll just try and show you how long it is with the. Because obviously I've, I've done it oh, with less stitches than recommended on the pattern. So maybe if I, well, you see, it's even bunched up on the cable as you can see. When it is stretched out, it will be, it'll still be a really substantial length. And I think they were holding it that way, but I'll have to see what I think when I get to the point where, you know, it's nowhere near what I would want yet. But yeah, it's a lo lovely, lovely pattern, this. And it's really, really nice for using all your scrap yarns up. Because I'm trying my best this year not to have loads of little bits, you know, left over. Okay, and the final project that I want to talk to you about, it's a um, new cast on. And I'm knitting this, and it's a test knit. Um, it's a test knit for uh, Wool Needle Hands, which is Taylor. Um, she's got a YouTube channel. She also has her own hand dyeing business. And I'm sure you all probably know who she is. She's very popular on YouTube, um, and and this is her first uh, test knit. I think she's just released a pattern called the Franken sweater, and that's a pattern that she had her Patreons testing, um, and then she's knit this. Um, if you watch her videos, you will have seen. Um, She's called it the Little Black Tea. And she's used, I'm using the recommended yarn for the pattern, which I bought from Amazon. It's this one. In this lovely blue color. And it is called, um, the brand is About Strings and this is called Lazy Wool. And it's a DK weight yarn. And the colour is Cloud. It is, I think, all right, it's 55% merino and 45% cotton. They come in 50 gram balls. Um, I think it costs around £30 for the four balls. It's not cheap. Um, but... Taylor was raving about this yarn and I thought, Do you know what, it's a t-shirt so I probably won't need as much and um, I just really wanted to try it to see if it's, because I've, I've, you know, I want to try some different summer fabrics this year. So... It is quite bunched up on my needles. I have made quite a bit of progress. Um, I think I cast it on on Monday. And it is now Friday. So I've done the neck. I've done the short rows. And I am now working my way through the raglan increases. I hope you can see how lovely this is knitting up because I at the moment based on the knitting experience alone I highly recommend this yarn and it, it really does look pr very very neat um, I am knitting it on chow goo which I find for me because I'm quite a tight knitter it does help a bit with the tension um, but yeah I just think just look at the fabric on that Apologies if you see any dog hairs in there, but he does get involved while I'm knitting. Um, yeah, so, um, so far so good. I did have a bit of a hitch. I would have been a bit further along, I think, but um, I had a problem doing my... Uh, God, I can't think of that. The short row section, sorry. 
nothing to do with the pattern it was entirely my fault um, and I had to tink that back I didn't dare just rip it out because I didn't want to um, lose where I was especially with it being a test knit I wanted to make sure that I was doing it correctly um, I think unfortunately I just started it at a point when um, I had a lot on my mind and I was distracted and then I clearly missed part of the short row section so I thought no nope, I want it to be right so I took it back and um, redid it and I'm so glad I did because I knew there was something wrong my stitch count was off but only by one stitch but I could tell by the look of things it just wasn't looking and sitting nice so I had done something wrong um, but I think now that if you look at the uh, raglan, raglan section, it is looking lovely. And I'm just really pleased and I'm, I'm really enjoying knitting on it. Like I say, the yarn's lovely to knit with. And it's coming along really quickly. I think the deadline for this is the 14th of May. So I've got quite a bit of time. I think I'll easily get it finished before then. Uh, but I just like to to crack on if it's you know a test knit I don't want to be um, worrying and stressed about it at the end um, what I'll do as well is I will put a picture on the side so that you can see the um, version that Taylor knit and I think that's all I want to say about that one the, um, I think the last thing I wanted to talk about was my bingo card. So I'll just bring that up on my iPad now. <laughs> Aaron's trying to creep past without interrupting the recording. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So um, I, did, I don't think I talked about my bingo card last time. I did the podcast uh, and I really am commi want to, committed and want to push myself to get the bingo card done this year. So I am um, talking about it on here to make myself accountable. If you haven't watched any of my earlier podcasts, uh, the bingo card um, concept is something that um, Giddy Yarns is. Helen from Giddy Yarns is um, doing this year. She has got a Discord channel uh, where you can talk with everyone else about your bingo and encourage each other to, to get the bingo cards done, which is really good because it makes it, again, it motivates you to get through it. So I'll put an image up here at the side of me so that you can see the bingo card while I'm talking about it and I'll try and see if I can highlight the square that I'm talking about because I don't think that the writing last time I put it up was the clearest on the screen so these are my nine bingo squares the concept is that like the make nine but this is not nine items you choose what you want to set yourself as your nine goals, knitting goals or craft goals for the year. So mine are a finished Dwayne sweater, knit a pair of slippers, take part in the winter set knit along, knit six pairs of socks from Stash Yarn, use my Alice in Wonderland advent, finish last year's blanket MCAL, Reduce my stash, use as many leftovers as possible, and complete or frog all whips started in 2023. So I am making quite good progress on a lot of these squares. The only one I've finished is the take part in the winter set knit along, and that's the one that I've highlighted in green. Um, I've already done that, that's finished. Um, knitting six pair of socks from Stash Yarn. Now I have done, I think, a couple of pairs. Um, just let me get my notebook because I've written everything down. I'll just put that down there. I've got this little notebook here. 
and it's where I'm keeping a track of um, so for reduce my stash I'm just tallying the grams in and the grams out each month the only time that things are not going to be included in my in and out and these are my clauses for myself it's up to you what you decide to do for your goals and, and it's totally flexible um, my in and out will not include yarn festival yarn i have two yarn festivals that i'm going to and although i do want to be mindful when i go to the yarn festivals and uh you know i'm a lot more mindful than when i went to the yarn dale last year where if you've seen my single skeins video you'll see that i just was like oh that's pretty oh that's pretty and bought quite a few single skeins now, I want to go to these yarn festivals and I want to enjoy them and I will buy some single skeins even though I have quite a few in stash because it's all part of the experience for me. And I do like knitting socks. I am still on my sock journey of finding the perfect socks for me and my partner. And I can't imagine that socks is something I won't be knitting going forward. So even if all I do is knit socks with those single skeins, that's absolutely fine. But I want to be a little bit more mindful, not go overboard with the single skeins because I have got a lot of nice ones in stash to use. And I want to go with a, a firm plan of sweater quantities of yarn that I would like to purchase. But I don't want to be limiting myself to the point at these things that, oh, I can't buy this, I can't buy that because of my in and out for my yarn for the year. So I've got two yarn festivals I'm going to. I won't be going to any others, I can't imagine. Um, two is quite enough for me in one year uh, with the amount of money that I want to be spending on yarn. Um, so they will not be included. And also I decided that anything purchased in 2023 that was still to arrive in 2024, uh, I would not be including. And that was uh, the Lay Family's uh, box that I'd got. Oh, did they include that? Yeah. Let me just check. I can't remember if I put that one in or not. No, so it was the Lay Family box, uh, which I'd purchased in December sometime of last year. And then the, the only other thing was in 2023 I did a Kickstarter with Ula and Leah and it's a Mongolian um, free range fibre that's collected in Mongolia, sorry, uh, where the animals roam free. They collect the fibre once a year and then um, you, if you join the Kickstarter you get that yarn at a reduced rate and you pay for it around summertime. And that gives them the um, enough money for them to go to Mongolia, collect all the fibre, get it all milled, all that, and um, and then they ship it back. Um, and they, they just do that once a year to get enough yarn for the year. And so I joined that in 2023. So what I got from that, I will not be included in my inns for yarns. So I did have those four... Um, amounts that I wouldn't be including but otherwise I want there to be more out than there is in um, because I have a limited storage and I don't want you know the yarn amounts to be getting out of control um, so I don't think there's much to report on that. I showed you in the last video the yarn in <clears throat> and that was um, the sequin yarn from uh, my creative garage which I cannot wait to knit up into a summer top. Now I'm toying with doing the Lily Kate Francis the t-shirt that she's just um, She's not just released it, she had it out last year, but she's knit up a blue version and it's lovely. So I might use that pattern, but I've still not decided. Okay, so 
let's just check on these socks because that's I got distracted there didn't I because that was what I was going to talk to you about I'm trying to find where I'd written down the um ah. okay so I've put in my bingo card that I want to do six pairs of socks from Stash Yarn in 2024. I have so far done a pair of stripy socks. These were the ones that didn't fit me, which I may go back and rip out, but I don't know. I couldn't face doing it just after I'd finished them. They were my first two at a time socks, which I really enjoyed. The yarn was an absolute dream to knit with. It's the Yarn Badger. She does a lot of self-striping yarns and they just look beautiful. But unfortunately, they don't fit me. Um, then I did the Toe Up Blue Fern Mini Socks, which I um, absolutely love. They fit me a little bit snug but they they do fit me nicely they're in a dk weight yarn uh, in all the minis from the landscape club and um, those colors absolutely stunning. blue fern yarns recently if you're not following her follow her on instagram unless you're on a yarn band then don't bother because honestly every month she's bringing out these colors and i'm just like oh gosh i just want them all but I'm trying to be good. Uh, but yeah, I highly, highly recommend her. And those yarns were, were beautiful. Colours were stunning. And then I finished uh, my partner's socks. Um, and then at the moment, I've got two on the go. So I've got my Dulcie Backy socks, which in this fortnight I've done absolutely nothing on. They're my first pair of colour work socks that I'm doing two at a time. Um, I'll just show you them actually if I can get to them. Oh yeah, they're just here. And I think that so so far if I and I've also got the sock tube, haven't I? So if I get the sock tube finished, I'm hmm, don't know whether to count that as what would you count it as one or two? It feels a bit of a cheat to count that as two pairs for that for that tally on there, but we shall see. These are the Dulcie Backy socks. If you haven't seen them before, this is the way they go, and it they're like love hearts. And I absolutely love these. It's just I just haven't knitted on them this fortnight. My focus has gone on the uh, on the pull sweater and on my little black tee, which is my test knit. So I will get back on with these because I'm also doing a, uh, a video log of a vlog of my um, process with them because my first colour work socks and I'm doing them two at a time. Oh, that's in my um, Willow Bay bag, my latest one. She's just, Willow Bay has just put out a gorgeous, gorgeous pink box bag. Her box bags are wonderful. I've not got one down here, but if you like knitting socks two at a time, I highly recommend one of Willow Bay bags, uh, box bags. They're absolutely fantastic for that. You can put your two cakes in the bottom or even four if you've got, uh, if you're doing two at a time with two colours or whatever. And um, they fit in beautifully. They're really roomy for a box bag. Um, and yeah, anyways, and this is my latest one from her, which I absolutely love. She started doing this design and I was, um, yeah, I was like, you have to make that into a bag, it's really good. Because <laughs> it's like everyone's liking that design at the moment, it's very popular, isn't it? So yeah, after I've done, I think I will just count my sock tube as one because it's only one, it, one's 100 gram that I'm using up. So that will actually be five, which I'm quite impressed with really because it means that I could get potentially quite a few more of them single skeins out of my stash by the end of the year which is good so in January I was minus 150 grams and then in February I was minus 268 
And I don't think I've had any finished objects in March yet. And Sunday is the last day of the month, so there's not going to be anything finished. So, two, six, eight, four, seven, five. So I'm 418 grams down in total, if I work that out right. But I purchased 300 grams in um, March, which means if I complete nothing by Sunday, my overall will still be a negative, thank goodness, and it's 118 grams that I will be um, out of my stash, which doesn't seem like a lot. But I have got three big garments here. So I've got my um, Salty Days sweater, which I just need the two sleeves and the collar on. I've got the Paul sweater, which you saw, and that will be um, a big amount out of my stash. Uh, I've just got my, finish that first sleeve, the next sleeve and the collar, and that'll be done. And then I've got my Daft Days cardigan, which I've just got the sleeves and the button band to do on. So I would hope that throughout April I would get one or two of them finished. If not, potentially three, but that might be pushing it. You know what it's like with knitting. You think, oh, I can do all these things and then it doesn't end up that way. So for my um, rest of my bingo squares... What I did want to, um, so yes, that was reduce the stash um, and my socks. Um, some of those are whips from 2023. I do want to cast on my Alice in Wonderland advent and for that I am doing a shawl. Um, which is by Jonathan Tallow, I think his name is. And it's a brioche shawl. Um, I was going to cast that on, but then I got accepted for the test knit. So I really need to focus on that first. And then I will cast on the shawl. So that will be the start of one of my squares. And the one that I really, the reason I really wanted to mention this as well is because my aim was to do one of the clues of the blanket MCAL, and I'll put a picture of it here. Um, one of those clues every month starting in March, and I've not touched it in March. And I really, really want to get that finished by the end of the year. And to do that, I really have to do one clue a month for nine months. So it's if I don't get started on it now, it's going to be a real push to get it done and I don't want it to end up being a chore. I want the finished object, just the thought of how big it is, kind of put me off. I know once I get it out, I'll enjoy it because it's mosaic knitting. It's really Moorish to knit, but it's not a mindless knit and you have got to concentrate. And each section, I think, um, has been quite a number of rows I mean I think the last section may have been something around the 150 rows um, so it does take because it's not mindless and you are following a chart or written instructions whichever you prefer it does take some time although for every two rows the wrong side row is very easy you're just following along with what you've done on the first on the right side if that makes sense but I really just want to um, make a start because I don't want another year to go by and it not to be finished. I mean, it's a stunning shawl stroke blanket, so it will be nice to have that done. And also, um, it sort of goes through a kind of, not a fade, but it's like transitioning into different colours. And it's going to be getting into like a purple section, which I love purple, so um, I really want to do that. Okay, so I've mentioned my pulse for Emma sock tube and uh, the scrappy blanket. 
um, a new cast on which is the test knit and the bingo card and I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, my plans for the next fortnight before the next podcast is um, I'd love to get the pole sweater finished uh, and um, the sock tube finished. That would be great. I'd be happy with that. Carry on with my blanket. Maybe do a bit of the uh, blanket knit along. Who knows? But yeah, if I can get the pole sweater finished and the sock tube done while also knitting on my test knit, uh, that would be great but I think I'm being a bit ambitious there anyways thank you very much for watching if you've got to the end I, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, podcast and um, you've had some time to knit and relax while watching hopefully you'll have um, a lovely or you've had a lovely Easter weekend because it will be Sunday when you see this and um, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel Yet again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.